From Reminder Media, this is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Hosted by the VP of Marketing, Josh Steik, and Reminder Media's president, Luke Akery. So get ready to hear the golden nuggets that will allow you to live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. My mindset is very positive right now, ladies we and gentlemen. I will be back on the basket, it, basketball court in no time. You guys will... <laughs> please don't Yes, do please that. don't get back on the basketball court. So. Today's feature review comes from Dean81. It's a shorter one, but it's good. It's called Pen and Paper, is how he titled it. It's five stars. This podcast has great content. If possible, listen with Pen and Paper. Ooh. You will want to listen to the same podcast multiple times. Subscribe today. Thank you, that is Dean, awesome. Thank who I you. assume was born in 1981. Hey, today, we have a nationally recognized real estate writer. Her name is Christy Murdoch Edgar. She creates content for some of the biggest names in real estate and real estate investing, as well as does consulting and coaching on content marketing strategies for clients all over the U.S. She's a current faculty member with Florida Realtors, leads workshops and training events for brokerages both online and on site nationwide. In addition, she's a contributor to Inman.com, where she writes two ongoing columns, Lesson Learned, a weekly re uh, realtor profile, and Marketing Mastermind, which is a monthly Q&A. Look her up on Inman. She's got like mm -hmm. 20 pages of articles. So this guest <laughs> knows how to write. She teaches yes. people how to write. So if you're looking for a way to inject some content marketing into your marketing platform, your organic lead generation, whatever that might be. Get your pen this is the and paper to listen to. ready. Hey, <laughs> Dean81 <laughs> says to listen to yes. pen and paper. Listen to Dean81. I actually am excited, selfishly excited. I'm always excited when we interview our guests, but this, like, content is literally what we do. Like, yeah. that's up our alley of kind of, so I'm I'm ready to take away tips myself, get my own pen and paper going. <laughs> uh, but Christy, it is great to have you on the show, so welcome to Stay Paid. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Yeah, so, you know, I want you to introduce yourself to the audience. Just kind of tell them your quick life story, for lack of a better word. How'd you oh. get into real estate? How'd you get to writing and, and end up now with Inman News and writing for them and all this content yeah. marketing? Like, how did you end up where you're at? Well, I actually spent 15 years teaching English. Um, so the, the whole idea of coaching people with the writing process is really familiar to me from that. And then uh, I got into real estate with a friend and like a lot of people was just sort of doing it on the side uh, during the summers. And uh, the Washington DC real estate market, of course, is really hot always. And so, um, so I was licensed in Virginia and I just eventually sort of started putting the two together. Um, so creating content for other people, and teaching other people how to create content for themselves. So here's the thing that I've always seen is the struggle with content marketing for business owners. Because we have, you know, obviously a lot of real estate agents that listen to this podcast, but we also have insurance right. agents, financial advisors. I mean, it's a myriad mm -hmm. of different businesses. The problem right. with content marketing is it's not an instant gratification game. And yes. that's really hard, especially for salespeople, <laughs> yeah. to wrap our minds around. Myself included. Where's the lead? Like, right. Yeah, it's yeah. like I put out an article. I, where's my leads coming in? And it's so, true. like, walk us through, like, how do you get into content marketing? Like, how do I even start? Like, if I'm a new agent or a, you know, even like a financial advisor or anybody, like, how do I start with right. content marketing? You know, because what if I'm not a writer, too? Like, how, how do I go right. about this? Oh, exactly. Well, I always think of it as sort of three big um, aspects to, to content because you have sort of your core and that's going to be your website um, or the place where you're going to sort of house your content. Uh, so for some people, it might just be their YouTube page, um, but then for other people, it's going to be a website. And then um, whatever your big piece of content that comes out on a consistent basis. So maybe that's a blog, maybe it's a podcast, maybe it's video. Um, so some kind of uh, consistent content generation and then whatever you're doing to then drive traffic to that content. So it might be social media, it might be an, a huge email list that you have, but whatever you do that keeps people checking in on a regular basis and distributes that content. So those are really the three things that you need. And, and honestly, 
there are so many great platforms that cost little or nothing out there. Um, you know, it, it, there, price is really not a barrier. It's really just the time that you have to, you know, kind of create the content That's itself. A great point. When you talk about like consistently putting out content, is there a <laughs> benchmark you can give? Like, is it once a week? Is it once a month? Like, what have you seen works? I always say, and, and I mean, this sounds like a cop out, but it's really true. It's whatever you will do and can do on a consistent basis. Mm. That's more key to me than how many things you put out. So ideally, would we love you putting out, you know, 12 articles a month? Absolutely. That would be great. Um, but if you can do one or two consistently, you're going to see results from it. Not as many, maybe, not as fast, maybe, but you're going to see results. So doing them consistently versus doing higher volumes inconsistently will exactly. continue to bring the traffic back because people kind of, ex they, they have expectations. They start to develop a pattern, a routine. with. Exactly. And for SEO too. I mean, you know, if you have Google crawling once <laughs> because you threw 12 things up there in a row, that's not as good as having it coming back and seeing that you're consistently providing more and more content. Yeah you know, on a regular steady basis. You consult real estate, uh, uh, the majority, I assume. A lot of our listeners are in real estate. I know you work with other clients. What are topics? Like, where does somebody start when it even comes with, okay, great, I, 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 maybe, I, maybe I'm a good writer. You even say on your website, like, I don't want to make you sound like a writer. I want to make you sound like yourself. So that's, right. that's a good starting point. It kind of alleviates the pressure of having to be a good writer. But how do I even come up with the topics? Exactly. What do I write about? You write about what you care about and what you're passionate about. And I, more and more I'm getting sort of in this direction when I talk to people because everybody has their article up there about, you know, um, this is the, you know, home buyer's guide or mm -hmm. this is my, um, uh, you know, the, the financing process, right? This is pre-qual versus pre-approval. So everybody has already written those articles. Now, I am happy if you want to hire me to write you one. I'm happy <laughs> to do it. And you can pay me all day long and I can write it all day long. But it's not going to do for you what you want it to do. So I really believe that the more you can latch on to the thing that makes you great or the thing that makes you an expert or the thing that makes you just excited and passionate, the better you'll do. So, for example, if you're a real estate agent, instead of writing those kind of tired, evergreen posts, you know, if you love the outdoors, like I, I live in Florida now. So, you know, there are a lot of opportunities to get out and do things. So, you know, if you're in your market and you want to share like all the best hikes or all the best fishing spots or all the best, you know, whatever, and that's what you want to talk about and be an expert on, do that. You know, that's a niche that you can create for yourself and an audience that you can appeal to. Um, I always give the example, you know, there's a real estate agent. I won't say who and I won't say where. Um, <laughs> she takes um, pole dancing classes for fitness. <laughs> and she has sold a lot of houses that's to a awesome. lot of pole dancers. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, that's so she creates content around that, right? And, it's so and good. it's just amazing. And, you know, she got a lot of flack for it when she first started. And, you know, her broker didn't like it and, and whatever. And she just believed in her own personal experience and that there were people who would be interested and who worked in that industry and she's got a lot of great clients hmm. so and yeah, they love her <laughs> it really speaks to like you want to work with the people who it's your tribe you like yeah, yeah it's your tribe you want to your work tribe, with the people that's who are, it and that's so that's obviously how to how to, one way to find that so you've got the blog right you're posting the articles um where else are, where else could as a realtor as a business professional i'm writing about what i love you said you can post it on your blog, you can post it on YouTube. Where else can you post it? Are there any other sites that you can use to get your content out there, your brand out there? I know like Medium is kind of a site where a lot of people will post to for... I was just going to... Yeah, I was just going to say Medium. Medium is definitely something people are really into. You see some like big names there. And so it's got a certain cachet right now. So that's definitely something that uh, that I think people can look into. Um, another place that I think is kind of interesting, and I 
I really wasn't that familiar with it until I started writing for one of my clients for it. And then I ended up doing a lot of writing myself was Quora. Hmm. Um, oh, yeah. That's so a great point. going on great and, point. you know, answering people's questions about the thing that you're an expert in. And you'd be surprised at the number of people who, um, you know, for a really thoughtful kind of meaty answer, you know, people appreciate that. And, um, you can reach out to people that way. So it's, it's, there's lots of different opportunities, forums and, and Reddit, of course, you know, is a place that, um, you know, there are all kinds of interests and all kinds of communities there. And, you know, you can get to know people there. No, that's such a good point because I think a lot of times it's, it seems very intangible. Like I've got my blog, I can share it on my social media, but if I don't have a social media following, how do we get traffic to my blog? And obviously right. there's some SEO stuff, and maybe we can go even go into that a little bit. But you're hitting on kind of this getting active. So Core is a great, a great site where you could go on and ask the CEO of Google what it's like to run Google, right? right? And the CEO of Google yeah. jumps on and starts answering those questions. So getting on there right. and following topics, like you can follow real estate, you can follow... I'm sure it goes down to local. I haven't tested. I don't know if you know, but I'm it absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Goes down to you local see area. questions that are like, "What is it better for me to rent versus buy in this city in Australia?" I mean, right. it's like, yeah. Mm. And Reddit Definitely. is about as micro niche as you can get. There is literally exactly. a subreddit Seriously. for everything. So exactly. jump on there, get active with yeah. the community, and then use that as a way to bring more eyeballs to your site. When you are setting up your blog or you're writing content. What are some tips that you would give people, especially local, you know, local professionals writing for a local market? What are some tips you can give from an SEO perspective to help them be found by people in their area? The very first thing I think everybody should do, and it really doesn't even cost a whole lot, uh, but yet, I mean, I talk to big companies that don't do this. It, you know, keyword analysis. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need to have somebody run a, an analysis of not only the ideal keywords that you think you want, right? Like who's your audience that you're trying to reach? What are the keywords? But then your competitor keywords. So identify maybe two or three other people in your market who are just killing it and who are ranked really high and see what they're optimized for. And that's going to give you a lot of insight into what's going to make you competitive for SEO. What are some tools that I guess you would recommend? I, maybe free, maybe maybe they're maybe they're paid tools, but like how does someone go about yeah. that? Yeah, a lot of times you'll see um, like through PR firms. Okay, they can do it. Um, SEMrush, I SEM think has Rush, a tool. Yep. I know. Yep, I Don't know Google SEM has Rush? a tool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I know there's a Google tool. Um, a lot of them, you know, you have to have a subscription, but it, again, it's not very expensive and you're probably going to use it like once and it's not, a, you know, so it's, again, not a big uh, expensive outlay. Or you can just have somebody who's, you know, good at it. Go to Upwork, go to Fiverr even, mm -hmm. and have somebody, you know, run that for you. It, it's not going to be very expensive and they're going to maybe know a few tricks, you know, just to make it a little bit more effective. And um, and go ahead and get that information and go in with that in mind. Now, never, 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 you know, stuff a lot of keywords in your content to right. try to yeah. trick the algorithm because like that'll that. just right. make it. Yeah, that'll make you go <laughs> to the bottom. The algorithm mad. <laughs> exactly, and just have it in your mind. It's a very organic process, but if you kind of know the things that you need to say, and then you can go back during your revision and kind of make sure, yeah, I hit that. Let me tweak this a little bit and say it here. Yeah. Uh, you know, make sure well, it's in your header and your subheads. One of the things that we've struggled with, and we, we just went through this as a business too, is going through this, trying to spend more time on our modifiers and, and our SEO efforts. And so often, like everyone wants to get, go with the, what they call like the, the largest or the, the most broad term, right? So real estate yeah. in Philadelphia, right? I right. want to be found for real estate in Philadelphia. Chances you're are not you're not <laughs> going to be found. Not <laughs> everyone can be on the first page. And more importantly, right. like you got to be one, two, or three right. in terms of organic search results if you want to have any chances exactly. of getting clicked on Google. So that's where bringing it back to the niche and making sure that if you're writing an article about 100%. hiking in in uh, I don't know, Lancaster County or whatever, which yeah. I think is more farms than trails. Yeah. So I need a better I, example there. I don't really know. I'm not much of a hiker. In, in Lycoma <laughs> County, L Lufana, 
Luthana? What's is that where you, oh, Fluvanna. Fluvanna. I was like, Luthana, what is he talking we about? We were just today? talking on the podcast before about where exactly where I grew Luke up, grew Fluvanna up. County. Hiking in Fluvanna <laughs> County, like those are what you want to say, like, hey, I went hiking in Fluvanna County. Yeah. And you want to yeah. make sure that you're getting that keyword in your blog a number of times. Now, exactly. it, can't, it still has to be good content. It can't be that phrase in every paragraph. Right. But making right. sure that you're getting that in there and then in WordPress, if you're running your blog on WordPress or you're running it on another, uh, you know, free site that, that publishes, like, I don't think Blogspot's a thing anymore, but if you're running on, like, another free site, there's always free SEO tools where you can just type in where it'll actually totally. put those keywords into the meta description of the web page. And all that's kind of technical, but the, the idea is the same in terms of when you're writing your content, think about those keywords that you want to be found by and, it, and think of them as more specific than just real estate in Philadelphia. I'll give you an example from a guy that I interviewed very early on for Inman when I first started writing for them. And he's in Boston, and he was in sort of the dot-com boom and bust back in, like, the <laughs> late 90s, early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And he bought, for, like, 99 cents each, URLs for every little tiny micro neighborhood mm. around Boston. And then he bought them for... Um, pet friendly every little tiny micro neighborhood and then he bought um student apartments for every little tiny micro neighborhood so he has about 80 some odd urls and and has content for all of these and so i mean he owns right. the rental market <laughs> in boston which is a huge rental market because he has all these ways to wow. optimize in these very narrow ways yeah yeah, that is incredible. No, that's super yeah. smart. Yeah. Super, super Unfortunately, smart. you can't do that anymore. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, URL exactly. squatting. It's like, I know some people <laughs> who made some gone. good money off of buying yeah. URLs in, in the early dot-com age. So question yeah, yeah. for you, you know, when it comes to content marketing, right, you're, you're really doing this principle or you're trying to take advantage of this principle. It's a way to get people to know you, to like you and trust you. They like you based upon the content that you write. And then the idea of the trust comes from you showcasing your authority on a subject matter, right? So if you, if you, you know, when you write on this content, you're showing kind of your authority in this subject matter, which gets people to see you as that authority. And then they naturally, when they think of this, they come to you. When they think of pole dancing, they go to that lady for the pole dancing, right? Pole fitness. Oh, yes, yes, I fitness. Think it's pole fitness. Yes. Yeah, that's, I love that. I think that's awesome. <laughs> but Because they think about, they it's, think about who do I want to work with? Yes. I want to work with somebody who That's understands like. me, yes. understands what I need. Yeah. It, it's it's so powerful to help you really take advantage of this principle of yeah. you know getting people to know you, like you, and trust you. And your though experience, what it, what is the biggest blockers for people? Like where do they get hung up? The biggest thing I think is that people and I, I wrote about this for my blog actually, vulnerability is so key mm. and people are very afraid to be vulnerable and people don't even like that word, you know, but I mean, making yourself open to your audience um, emotionally sometimes, or just, you know, sharing who you really are authentically, that is a, that's kind of a risky feeling thing to do. And uh, so, you know, but you have to do it to get that really authentic voice, to get that real heart connection with people, you have to put yourself out there. And it just feels too um, intimidating for some people. And they just won't do it. They want to sound like kind of this Don Draper robot professional person. <laughs> and, you know, and, and like, think about that show. Don Draper didn't really get genius until he – opened himself up to the universe and made himself really vulnerable. Spoiler alert. Um, so, you know, you've got to really do that. You've got to kind of open yourself up to your audience. And if you can't do that and you want to keep this veneer, you're never, I don't think, going to get the kind of reaction and response that you want from people. Mm. I think that's so powerful and so true. We had a uh, guy, Tyler Harris, uh, we were at a conference yeah. with him one time, and he posted the video was – and I can't remember the exact title, but I think it was like, I'm just an al said, just alcoholic, an alcoholic, yeah. uh, alcoholic, and he yeah. shared about his struggles of being an alcoholic, and he said yeah. it was his most popular, like his most popular it video. It was over 100 videos that he had uh, put out um, at this point. Yeah. Totally. Because, because people connect. People are looking to connect. Oh, uh, yeah. 
Well, and this is the experience I had with video. I have been, you know, I mean, I'm, I, well, I, I don't mind saying I will be 50 next week. And I have <laughs> had the experience. Thank you. <laughs> I've, I've written for years and I kept saying, I can't do video. I'm too old and nobody wants to see that. And when I started making myself do videos, I started hearing from people who had been clients for years with whom I had never had an actual conversation. It took me from being this sort of faceless bot who wrote their content to being a person. Mm. And it connected us in ways that I just found incredible. And people would say to me, and I mean, I don't even have a big follower, you know, count or anything, but it was, it was just that it, the people who did see it really connected in a way Mm. that the written content didn't do. You know, so there's just something people do not care. And I say this to people all the time. They don't care what you look like. They don't care how wrinkled you are. They don't care about any of that. Mm. They care about you sharing something real with them. And if you'll do that, they will reward you for it. I mean, my business just went to a whole other level just from doing that. It was really amazing. No, it's so true, and I think we need to point out to the audience, like, content marketing is not just writing. It's also, you can do yeah. it in right. video form, and, and obviously video is taking over. Podcasts, right, and podcasts, yeah. what we're doing right here is content oh, yeah. marketing. Um, no, I've seen that in my own journey with uh, social media. Yeah. It's been very interesting. I tend to be a very yeah, polished, open up. Yeah, a very Come polished on, person, yeah. right? So, like, when I yeah. speak, I tend to... I don't um a lot. I, you know, am more eloquent, but that doesn't connect as well over video or over social comparatively to where you're umming or you're making a mistake or something like that. It's actually better. So I hope that's an encouragement to people out there because when you're making a mistake or when you're not as polished, people connect with it. They don't connect with a robot, for lack of a better, you don't have to be perfect in what you're doing. You, you want to be vulnerable in what you're doing. And so I've seen that in my give, own journey. Oh, absolutely. I always give the example of there's a woman who um, she every Monday morning will do her video for the week and she'll do it like in her pajamas with her hair up in a bun and her glasses on. <laughs> and she got she got very popular. She got invited to a conference and she had her hair done and her nice outfit <laughs> and her contacts in. And people were disappointed because they wanted to see <laughs> the person they knew. And That's yeah, a great point. The real her. Yeah, that yeah. that is so good. I think the struggle is. I'd be interested to hear your opinion on this. Is the struggle is the balance between offending people and acting unprofessional. Like that's always what comes into like my mind or comes into right. I think the mind of business owners is like I don't want to offend somebody. Or I don't want to be unprofessional, and right. which lowers the trust. What's been your experience with that? Some people will not like this answer. Good. My thinking is, <laughs> <laughs> my thinking is that we are at kind of a paradigm shift where a lot of those old rules and old ways of thinking are going out the window. Not for everybody, but for a significant part of the buying public. Mm. And so to constrain yourself based on rules that are designed for people who are older, Mm. um, I don't think makes sense. And especially if you're a young professional or a young entrepreneur and you have something really authentic to say, really authentic way to communicate, and it's going to serve a huge group of people, do it. Mm. I mean, you are going to offend some people. Okay. You know, there are plenty of very articulate, professional, prim and proper people out there to serve those people. So, So my thinking would be go for it and be you and find your tribe like we were talking about. And, you know, let the rest of the people go on and find somebody else who works for them. Everybody has their person they connect with. So 
find the people who you connect with and serve them the best way you can. Yeah, no, I think that's such a powerful point. I think we're seeing it play out in so many areas of life. Yeah. Is people yeah. want the directness now. They don't want the fluff. Yes. They don't want the sugar coating. They just want it to be yeah. said like it is. And I just did a I just did a generations, a big generations article for Inman. And I went all the way back to the silent generation, which is like the sort of World War II generation and went forward. And there's this break at my generation, which is Gen X, where it's like you don't trust advertising, you right. don't trust anything fake, right. and you just want to hear it for real. And you don't you're not offended by somebody if they're putting it out there in a way that's authentic. And um so yeah, I just I I just I I'm so tired of people not doing what they need to be doing because they're afraid somebody's going to not like it. Like, who cares? You know, I just wrote an article on setting boundaries with clients, and the same principle applies. Yes. And I've seen that when you set boundaries, which seems like you're offending someone, telling them no. Like, but when you tell right. people no, they actually want to yeah. work with you more. More. Like it's Absolutely. it's a weird. Well, now I want it. Yeah, it's like it's a, now they respect you more. They're like yes. and, like they go, oh, this oh. person's a professional. Like they they actually it's are incredible. worth time. It, yeah. So, but I think that's just such a barrier. And then when you're a new agent, anybody new listening to this right now, you're like, I need yes. every deal I can get. So you're not right. telling anybody no, but you're losing your power. You're losing the confidence, 100%. and they don't want to work with you now because they want to work with somebody that will direct them. That's why they're coming to you because you're the trusted advisor. And so you get this kind of level of trust when you, you tell people now. So I think the same plays out in your content marketing. Like you earn Absolutely. this level of authority. Um, so it's very interesting to see this principle apply. That's when you know you have something that is true when, it, when a yeah. principle applies to more than just the application. It's an actual inherent exactly. principle that's happening in, in, I guess, a human's heart and, and their mind, which causes them to do and act certain ways. So, you know, I'm curious, you know, so content marketing, you go podcast, you go video, you go writing. When you produce this content, right, what is the mm -hmm. best way to distribute it that you find? Like, what's the best way someone can get it out there that you've seen? It depends on what you have done, what you've built, what you've put your time into. So for some people, and I have clients who they do very little on social media, but they have a massive email list. And so for them, that's the primary way that they distribute. Um, some people, it's social media. For some people, it's Facebook. For others, it's Instagram. And I always say, you know, I don't think you have to be on every platform. Okay. You know, I have, I have people who will say, you know, oh, we're on all the platforms. I'm like, when did you, When's the last time you posted? Oh, 10 months ago. You know, I mean, they never post. It's a huge so problem. One pop platform, maybe two, and be real consistent with them. Don't try to do all of them. So you really haven't found necessarily where you would say you should build an audience no. through email and do email. You've just found wherever you're, audi wherever you're having some success, double yes. down on that area. Do that more. Okay. 100%. Yeah, 100 so become the master of it. Do do new things, look at the people who are great in that space and kind of emulate some of what they do and, and just really try to find the thing that you can really get the most mileage out of. Yeah. I, I would find the same to be true is that if there's really is no, ma it's whatever you're committed to. It's that wherever you're having some success yes. and committed to, if people are opening up your emails, then, then double down on that and collect emails every chance you get to build that list. And exactly. Then hit them on that and go list. ahead and, and do some landing pages, some different things that will, you know, generate some of that, uh, some of those emails or do some drip campaigns or things like that where people have to kind of opt into it. Um, you know, go ahead and I just did, uh, actually, I had a client who, you know, had a drip campaign and every single piece of that campaign linked to a video or linked to a blog post or whatever. So, you know, incorporate all of that. And if that's the, the preferred thing that, that's going to work for you. What's your feeling on curating content, like using curated content versus writing it yourself? Uh, let me ask you to expand on that a little yeah, bit. So what, what are you like I'm an agent, I want to do content marketing, but I don't want to write it myself. I want to go find articles that are not, already written and uh, use it. Um, 
yeah, like, can you if tell you're watching from the video, yeah, yeah, you, if can you're, see, yeah, you yeah. can see the reaction. That's all <laughs> I needed to hear. You know what I mean? Because that's a <laughs> tactic that people will use. So what I always tell people, I know exactly what you mean now. What I always tell people is HGTV has their own marketing department. They do not need you. They don't need you <laughs> to distribute their content for them. And it's doing not one thing for you. Mm. So, so yeah, no, I absolutely think you need your own content, even if it's really simple, even if it's, you know, getting up there and doing a quick video and that's it. Put your own stuff out there. You should not have um, other people. I, I just, I don't see any purpose in it. Well, we know um, that was a golden nugget because so we saw producer Ariel go over and click the button on the, which yeah. means she's saving that she's clip. She's saving that clip. HGTV yeah. <laughs> has its own marketing department. It doesn't need Here's to what I would say to add on to that because, you know, Josh and I's background, I mean, this is what we do. We produce right. lifestyle based content, stuff like that. Where we have seen it be successful, here's the mistake people make they go to HGTV, they grab an article, and they post it on their Facebook. And they uh -huh. think, that's going to help. It doesn't hurt you necessarily. I would say it doesn't hurt right. you. Where it's powerful is where you connect it personally to somebody. So i.e. Megan sure. in your database, Megan, who's my wife, Megan, right. I know you and Luke are remodeling your patio. Check out You're this patio this. on HGTV. I thought of you and Absolutely. thought you would love it. Right. That's, the, that's perfect. That's yeah. the difference maker in using curated yeah. content that everybody misses that point. And that's everything. That's like you don't great. even need yeah, the content to do that point. Yeah. So I agree with you. I think people think about curated content in the sense of, I'm going to go grab this article and, and publish it on my YouTube, oh, yeah. on my whatever, my Facebook. And, right. and they're missing that that's... It's not that it hurts you, but it doesn't really, really help you. What, 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 what you want to use it for is connecting it to a personal relationship that you have or a personal detail you have with somebody, and that will make all the difference. And text it to exactly. somebody thinking of you, check totally. this out. That's where it makes such a huge impact. Or let that be your next topic for your blog. Mm, or yes. let that be your next topic for your video. I just read this article. I don't know how many of you saw it. I linked it down below. That's a great point. But I didn't really agree with this, you know, or I thought this was such a good point, and this is how you can use that. So, yeah, I mean, use it as a springboard for something, maybe. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so if you are lacking, like, hey, I'm not sure what to talk about, always, what's your yeah. opinion? What's your opinion yeah. on this? Like, what's your totally opinion on, and you, you know, opinions, you, <laughs> you might get a little controversial, but what we've learned in this podcast, That's okay. don't be ashamed of being controversial. That's right. So here's, if you have found your tribe, it'll they'll be They'll connect okay. with it. Here's, yeah. um, you know, a question we ask every guest that comes on the podcast is, you know, I have been passionate my whole life of trying to search what's the secret to success. People who know me, know me that I try to break things down and say, what's the seven steps to, you know, to complete this to be successful? I know that doesn't exist. Everybody who's right. been in this business long enough or in any business knows there's no magic formula. You know, there's, there's right. principles that you have to apply. But in your life, I'm curious, because you're successful. You're writing now on Inman News. I mean, that's the leading news site in all of real estate, and you're writing on it. What have you found that has driven your success? What is the routines that maybe you've done, implemented, the things that you look back and go, this is what I've really found to help me drive success in my life? I think back to something my mother used to say, which is, uh, you know, like I was just kind of too dumb to know what I couldn't do. <laughs> um, you know, Amen. so. <laughs> That's you awesome. Know, That's a great quote. I, I, you can't have limits on yourself. And if you are putting limits on yourself, they're not real. You know, mm. I mean, so I just think so many people sort of think, um, oh, I'd love to do, you know, X, Y, Z. Go do it. Mm. And if you can't do it today, figure out a path that at least puts you in that direction. And it's amazing how stuff will just fall into place in order to allow that to happen. I mean, I'll, I'll just tell you the truth, and, and I, I don't know what Inman will think of it. The way that I started writing for Inman was blind sending one of my blog posts. And I didn't, and I think I sent it to like info at Inman. That <laughs> I don't is know, awesome. you know, it was just one of those generic things. And it somehow wound its way through uh, until it found my editor, who I love. Um, and who, you know, reached out and said, 
are you interested in writing for us? That <laughs> and is awesome. I, I didn't even know how to frame the pitch. I didn't even know who to pitch to. I just knew I wanted to write for them. Mm. Um, so, you know, sometimes it's just not even thinking through why you can't do something. It's just go ahead and do it and see what happens. Mm. It's a tagline. It of gets our you podcast. somewhere. Take action. <laughs> You got to take yeah, it. Oh, I thought absolutely. the tagline was don't, don't think. Yeah, don't real. think, just do. Don't it's think. It's the truth. It's <laughs> just the truth. I, mean, I mean, how many times have we heard the same principle? Just It's just stop overthinking it. Do it. Oh, my gosh. If you want to get on Inman News, send the article. That's awesome. Just, just send, send it. it. Like, meaning, so like, and if you're passionate absolutely. about it and you keep doing it, you know, consistency yeah. tends to breed success. That's it, take that's action it. IRL. Yeah. In, in real yes. life. In real life. Yeah, I it's love it. It's so true. It's so true. I love yeah. it. Well, Christy, man, th- thank you so much for being here. This was great. Thank this you for having awesome. me. Cool topic that we haven't really explored a ton here on the podcast with our guests. So definitely a unique insight. Before we close, awesome. let people know how they can connect with you and where they can follow you. Yeah, writing, W-R-I-T-I-N-G, realestate.com. Um, and that gets you to sort of my little realm um, and my blog is there, and of course, lots of you know contact information and stuff, and you can reach out there. Awesome. Well, thanks again for being here, and thank you so much for listening. If you liked what you heard here today on Stay Paid, please go head on over to iTunes, give us a five-star rating, make sure to leave a comment. It really helps us spread the word. If you're looking for other ways to support the show, tell a friend. Mm. Consider this. We're talking about content here. Consider this. We're talking about making content, <laughs> building relationships. Everybody likes the person that's recommending cool things, right? Especially that's education. True. Recommends the cool blogs, recommends the cool movies, the cool podcast. new songs. Cool podcast. <laughs> that's a great example. <laughs> Be that person today that everyone will like. Take action. Don't Let overthink yep. it. <laughs> that's right. Tell them about no this thinking. little hidden gem we like to call Stay Paid. You can also find our podcast and video Uh, as well as show notes to accompany this episode and all of our episodes at staypaidpodcast.com. And if you'd like to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com or find us on Instagram. We are at staypaidpodcast. And I will mention this. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I had a listener reach out to me on Instagram, and we did a 30-minute coaching call the other day for, for free. So I am passionate about helping you guys be successful. So if you're listening to this, and you need help, you know, take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. Reach out to Josh and I because we would love to, to help you guys out. I, I, she asked me if I could do personal coaching for her. I can't necessarily do personal coaching except through the podcast because of just my schedule. But I'm more than happy to schedule just like a 30-minute type call, answer you over Instagram or something like that to help you out. So take now advantage if, of it. Now, if, if that person is listening... Have yes. you given us a review on iTunes? Yes, Brenda. That's the question. Brenda, Brenda, Brenda. Brenda. <laughs> Leave us a well. review. <laughs> <laughs> For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. <laughs> and I'm Luke Acre, guys. And I'll give you this action item. You need to be doing content marketing. And the problem that holds you back from doing content marketing is really probably the time and the fear that you're not a good writer or you're not going to do good on video. And so here's my action item for you. You need to do it. You know that already because you're listening to this podcast. So it's not a matter of if you should do it or not. You're already going to do it. What it is is that you need to find out the topic that you're going to talk about. So what I want you to take action on is I want you to pull out your pen and paper. You hopefully already have it out because you're listening to podcasts. I want you to write down what you're passionate about. And that might be your hobbies, that might be what you're passionate about in the real estate business, what got you to get in, or if you're an insurance agent, what got you to get into insurance. Write that down, and then take that and start producing content. And I just challenge you, produce one piece of content a month. It's really easy. You could produce a video once a month talking about that passion. You could write an article on your hobby. Write one piece of content, commit to that. The difference between top producers and mediocre producers. Now, we've been at this for years now. We've worked in over 140 different industries. Every single industry never fails. The difference between top producers in that industry and mediocre producers is top producers take action. Don't just listen to the podcast. Take action on it. Start your content marketing today. Take action, guys.